Hello friends, welcome back to Longevity Now, Longevity Now FL. This is Luigi Fontana, a professor of medicine and scientific director of Charles Perkins Center RPA Clinic of the University of Sydney. Attention! Have you been relying on supplements or other substances to possibly prolong your health span and lifespan? Then it is crucial to listen to this video because uh, recent findings published in Nature Medicine, one of the most prestigious scientific journals in the world, are kind of uh, alarming. This new groundbreaking data, as I said, published in Nature Medicine, highlight a concerning finding regarding the excessive consumption of niacin, also called vitamin B3, B3, and uh, NAD boosting supplements. The study reveals that two terminal metabolites of uh, vitamin B3, niacin, and uh, NAD metabolism are clinically linked to cardiovascular disease. Yes, you have heard correctly. They are clinically linked to cardiovascular disease and vascular inflammation, regardless of traditional risk factor. This study strongly suggests that overuse of the supplement niacin or NAD boosting molecules like nicotinamide, riboside and nicotinamide mononucleotide NMN could potentially exacerbate vascular inflammation, yes vascular inflammation, and increase the risk of cardiovascular disease despite claims <laughs> of anti-aging benefits based on uh, inconclusive and underpowered clinical trials, weak clinical trials. For those who know me, it's evident that I've long been cautious about supplements, advocating for their use only when clinically necessary due to identified deficiency. Again, as a doctor, I only prescribe supplements when needed because of clinical, uh, uh, clinical history, supplement with uh, uh, blood tests that are uh, demonstrating uh, deficiencies, vitamin deficiency, and then basically I prescribe proper quantities of supplements. This recent study published in Nature Medicine underscores this cautionary approach revealing that certain supplements or CR mimetics like this NAD booster may not only fail to uh, affect aging processes positively, but could even potentially increase mortality rates. It is a stark reminder to exercise prudence. Before considering any supplement, it is crucial to rely on solid, yes, to rely on solid randomized clinical tra trials data that affirm both safety and efficacy. And for many supplements out there, there is no safety and no efficacy data. Just wishful thinking. This unequivocally is the truth. I'm sorry to tell you, but this is the truth. Then you can do whatever you want, you know, you can play with your health. That's your problem. Let's go back to the study, to the science. By employing untargeted metabolomics as a discovery tool, alongside subsequent structural elucidation studies on and rigorous validation, genetic and vascular function analysis uh, and other, other studies, mechanistic study, Farrell et al. demonstrated that two terminal metabolites arising from niacin and NAD metabolism are clinically correlated with cardiovascular disease irrespective of traditional risk factors. Additionally, both metabolites, the 2PY and 4PY, uh, 
are genetically associated with vascular inflammation. So they proved that in this paper. Niacin, commonly found in fortified food staples, play a role in NAD synthesis and has been observed to increase circulating levels of 2PY and 4PY, these two terminal metabolites, when consumed excessively. So when we consume more niacin than needed, you have you know, this overflow of these two, of these two metabolites uh, uh, and uh, either uh, as a over-the-counter supplement, a cholesterol-lowering medication, or even wor worse, as an NAD booster. Okay, so if you are consuming too much niacin as a supplement, as a supplemented food, uh, as a cholesterol-lowering medication, or even worse, as an NAD booster, you have this overflow, this excessive amount of uh, these two metabolites. The findings from this study suggest that the terminal metabolites of excessive niacin intake, particularly the 4PY, are linked to increased risk of major adverse cardiovascular events, MACE, and may contribute to the underlying mechanisms of residual cardiovascular disease risk through inflammatory pathways, including the direct enhancement of the VCAM1 expression on endothelial cells. Both laboratory-based and in vivo investigations in this paper indicate that 4PY can act as a catalyst for vascular inflammation, yes, vascular inflammation, and contribute to vascular phenotypes relevant to the initiation and development of cardiovascular disease. Recent clinical trials have even revealed that while niacin can lower LDL cholesterol and elevate high-density lipoprotein cholesterol, HDL cholesterol, while reducing triglyceride levels, when used alongside high-potency statin therapy, niacin not only fails to mitigate cardiovascular disease risk, but according to a recent meta-analysis, uh, of the latest trials may even increase overall mortality. Yes, they can increase overall mortality, and these are data from randomized clinical trials. Niacin, as I said, is vitamin B3, is prevalent in Western diets. With recommended daily intake allowances, LD, RDI, varying between based on age and sex, typically ranging from 14 to 18 milligram per day of vitamin B3 niacin. Despite its natural abundance in foods, in certain foods, like tuna, peanuts, brown rice, and many other whole grains, for example, 100 grams of tuna contain 22 milligrams of niacin, basically more than what is required daily. 100 grams of brown rice contain 2.6 milligrams, and 100 grams of peanuts, peanuts, dry roasted peanuts, contain 14.4 milligrams. So as you can see, if you have a healthy diet and you know where you're going to get your uh, niacin, you have no problem. You don't need supplements. And in reality, basically over 50 nations, including the United States, mandate niacin fortification in staple foods to prevent pellagra. So the data are showing that approximately 36% of U.S. people, citizens, uh, reported supplementing with niacin between 1999 and 2010 leading to an estimated daily consumption of 35 milligrams in 210, which tripled the recommended intake. Recent surveys suggest an average daily niacin consumption, because of these supplemented foods and other supplements, of 48 milligrams. Again, that is more than triple more than three times the recommended daily allowance, the RDA for niacin. 
Additionally, in the paper, the authors in the discussion say that NAD boosting supplements like nicotinamide, riboside and NMN also increase the levels of the two metabolized 2PY and 4PY. These supplements are often, they, they, they also say these supplements are often marked for the supposedly anti-aging benefits without any scientific proof that they have anti-aging benefits in humans. There are no randomized clinical trial even remotely supporting this claim, but yet people they are taking because they think you know, it has anti-aging benefits. Again, despite incomplete, weak clinical trials <clears throat> with biomarkers, with outcomes that are totally unrelated. The findings from current studies suggest that optimal niacin supplementation may require a more tailored approach driven by blood tests, balancing the replenishment of NAD pool members while avoiding excessive generation of the metabolite, the toxic metabolite 4PY. This strategy could help achieve intended health benefits without exacerbating risk, risks, pro-inflammatory risks, vascular inflammation and cardiovascular disease associated with elevated 4PY levels. The current research strongly advises against supplement intake. Yes. The current research strongly advises against supplement intake, including NAD boosters, especially if, if you maintain a healthy diet. As I said in previous videos in my books, supplements should only be considered if a deficiency is confirmed through blood testing. So a doctor is basically uh, making a diagnosis of a possible malnutrition, therefore it orders some blood tests and when the blood tests show a deficiency then basically uh, you can prescribe the appropriate uh, supplement to uh, replenish the deficiency. Additionally, this study prompts a re-evaluation of the continued mandate of niacin fortification in flour and cereals, while fortification likely played a crucial role in saving lives in the past when uh, uh, initially implemented over 80 years ago, its long-term safety, particularly for more vulnerable population, warrants examination. For instance, should there be consideration for easing the mandate to allow for organic or non-fortified flour and cereal options? This is especially pertinent given the study's findings that individuals with the highest quartile of, P, of 4PY, the niacin metabolite levels, face a approximately twice the risk of major adverse cardiovascular events compared to those with the lowest quartile levels. In summary, in summary, let me conclude, dear friends, it is crucial to exercise caution amidst the noise abundance of information available. The noise is not all of its beneficial all of it is beneficial to your health. All of this noise is beneficial to your health. Don't blindly accept claims without proper evidence. So the rule is that you shouldn't blindly accept claims from whoever they come without proper evidence from well-designed randomized clinical trials regarding safety and efficacy of the molecules that these people are prescribing. They are suggesting you should take, okay? Remember, if a substance, a supplement, is 
powerful enough to extend lifespan and health span, it can't be inherently safe at any dosage. I mean, this is for plain pharmacology. If it's so powerful, it must have a therapeutic window that is pretty narrow. Therefore, if something is deemed safe regardless of dosage, of dose, it's likely just plain water. Conversely, if a substance is potent, it must be approached with careful dosing to mitigate potential risks. So in conclusion, stay vigilant and prioritize evidence-based decision-making from health professionals that have a degree in medicine and they know their business when it comes to your health. This is Longevity Now, Longevity Now FL, the YouTube channel of the science and philosophy of health, well-being and longevity. I'm Luigi Fontana, a medical doctor, specialist in internal medicine, um, professor of medicine, the scientific director of the Charles Perkins Center RPA Clinic and the, the Health for Life program, and a clinical academic in the Department of Endocrinology of the Royal Prince Alfred Hospital in Sydney.